I mean, just to prove to you I'm not completely heartless, from my high Down Syndrome Association, Mike Makovich. Thank you for, for joining us. Thank you for right. having me. Let's get a little personal here. Sure. Now, you've got a Down Syndrome son, and I have a Down Syndrome son. I never expected to have a Down Syndrome son. It has changed my life in ways I really could have lived without, <laughs> and I'm imagining you, you feel the same way. I do, and uh, I know this is very rude to do, but I'm gonna make a quick correction. We always use people first language, so it's not my Down syndrome son, it's my son who happens to be, uh, happens to have Down syndrome. This is what happens when you get a politically incorrect person <laughs> with a Down syndrome son. Now, I understand there's not normal people either, it's now typical people, but it's hard for a conservative to keep up with all the politically correct speech, so you're just gonna have to give me a, a, a blanket pass for the rest of my life. No, I, Fair I, I will, I will, right. absolutely. So, you didn't expect it, I didn't expect it. Um, give, give everyone just a quick explanation because I had to go come up to speed on this faster than I wanted to. What, is, what exactly is Down syndrome? And assure people it's, it's, it's not as contagious as it seems. It's not, you're not gonna catch it from drinking out of the same water fountain, you're not gonna catch it from someone sneezing and touching a door handle. It's, it, it's not a disease, first of all, it's a, it's a genetic disorder. It is the most commonly occurring genetic disorder, chromosomal genetic disorder. It occurs out of one out of every 690 live births. Um, there's it's remarkably a, high. It is. One out of every 700 p live births. Correct. Is, is Down syndrome. Correct. This is a huge number. How many people have Down syndrome in the nation? About 400,000, but that number is, you, we have to be careful with the numbers because a lot of this isn't documented. Right. Um, you have to keep in mind Ill illegal immigrants, uh, they're not documented, but they're still having children right. in the United States. Um, people that move from state to state, they may be documented in one state, but if you move to Colorado from, say, North Carolina with a 25 year old with Down syndrome and you're not plugged into services or government agencies. How, how, many, how many here in Colorado? Uh, around 6,000. My kid, my son, is seven years old, and how to put this, he is the coolest damn kid on the planet. Uh, he is magical, and, and we, we, when we're out and we run into another kid who has Downs, it, it's, it's almost like they give each other you know, the Black Panther salute, it's like, hey, brother, and they get together, and, and I've never known people who live in the moment more, who have kind of a, um, a magical view of, of life than, than these people. Am, am I wrong? Is my observation wrong? You're not wrong, and you're, you're a father. That's the observation of your son. Um, after seven years of, of being with him, you know your son better than anybody else. Um, but I will say this, I mean, as you well know, um, at seven years old, I'm sure you've seen some great tantrums. Um, I'm sure you've, been, you've seen him be happy, sad, mad, glad, um, all the same emotions that you and I go through. Uh, people with Down syndrome go through the exact same emotions. They have the same... But they, they go through it like every 10 minutes, exactly. it seems, with my yeah. son. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but they've got the same dreams and aspirations that, that anyone else does. They're, they're people. Once again, it goes back to the language first uh, issue, and that's the reason that's so important, is because we need to reinforce in the community that these are people first. They're just like anyone else. Um, so that's why it's important for them to understand them being society, that they have dreams, aspirations, as, they want to go to college. As fathers of, of, of kids with Down syndrome, I, 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 I like that, I like that, see? I'm impressed. Yeah. Um, we, I, mean, I worry, you got to worry. I worry about how his quality of life, will he be able to be independent? Will he be able to take care of himself? Um, you know, people don't quite understand a Down's kid if, if you don't have if you don't have a kid with Downs, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, but I'll also say this, and tell me if I'm wrong, there is no better time in the history of mankind uh, to, to have Down syndrome. I mean, we, we live in a magical time where these people are living longer, are healthier and happier and getting more done than ever before. Am I, am I wrong on this? No, you're not at all. And I'm glad you brought that up. And, and I can take that one step further for you, if I may. There's no better place in the world, and I can say this with some authority, uh, with my position as the executive director for the Mile High Down Syndrome Association, there's no better place in the world to be than Denver, Colorado. We have a confluence of things going on here in Denver, uh, thanks to some funding, uh, thanks to some extremely dedicated professionals. You have the C Center for Down Syndrome, which is a pediatric organization out at the uh, Children's Hospital. You have the Linda Cernick Institute researching the, and I'm not a scientist, but the biology right. of Down Syndrome. 
syndrome and what that entails, um, hoping to eradicate the cognitive and uh, physical ill effects of Down syndrome. Not getting rid of Down syndrome. We don't want to, you know, that's not the point, but to make the lives of those with Down syndrome better. An affiliate or organization like ours, the Mile High Down Syndrome Association, Denver Adult Down Syndrome Clinic, there's, and then the funding uh, through a very generous family here in Colorado, John and Anna C., that made a $25 million gift to Down syndrome research. That's never happened anywhere in the world, and that's happening here and in Colorado. And it's also because more and more people are integrating their lives mm -hmm. with people with Downs. That uh, the C's, John C and his wife, their granddaughter Correct. has Down syndrome. Sophia. And so that makes it pretty darn personal pretty fast, and that's why he's he's interested in doing doing what he what he does. Uh, but we we also also want to make sure that people understand uh, uh, that my son has every opportunity as any other American. You know, he's going he's gonna to need some help. And uh, it, it took a while. It took a lot of work and a lot of operations. My son has been through 10 operations, including open heart surgery at, at just a, a few months. Actually, just a few, excuse me, just three weeks old, which goes to why I believe in the importance of, of, of research and development in healthcare and why I'm not a big fan of Obamacare. Your son has been through, a, through a, his, his share of, of surgery too. He actually hasn't had surgery. He was born with every conceivable heart issue. They all luckily healed themselves. That doesn't mean that something couldn't happen in the future. Um, but you're right, and to go back to your earlier point, you know, the money's only going to take us so far, and then we need to see a cultural shift. The money's great, but it's one one component to the story of making these people's lives better. Well, when you say cultural shift, help me out. And, and I want to make sure people understand a, a Down syndrome person is somebody who has an extra chromosome. So you think you're special, these people have one more chromosome than you. So, mm -hmm. and, and because of that, they, they are developmentally disabled. That is, it takes them a lot longer. They are delayed in learning the things that they need to learn. Um, and also, they have a host of physical issues. Uh, and it seems like whatever problem anybody else has, they have it worse. It just seems to be that way. But, but they also have the, you know, the same hopes and dreams and, and um, uh, remarkable different personalities. Um, when, when you start talking about a civil rights issue. Explain that to me, because I don't know if I quite follow you. I can give you a concrete example. It happened uh, probably two months ago in Wyoming. A child with Down syndrome, we call it multiple diagnosis. The child has six years, six years old, has Down syndrome, uh, autism, and unfortunately has uh, seizures. Child in the classroom in a summer program in the school that he went to last year and is now attending again this year, had a seizure in the middle of his classroom. When he awoke, he had wet his pants. What did the teachers do? They locked him in a closet because he tried to take his pants off to get out of his wet clothes. That's a civil rights issue. No one should ever be, no child, no one, no human being should be locked in a closet because they wet their pants. And so these teachers, thinking that they were doing the right thing, I'm not sure what they were thinking to be honest, locked the child in the closet because he wet his pants during a seizure. That's a civil rights issue. Somewhere as we're having this conversation right now, someone's being denied proper medical attention, educational opportunities, social opportunities, employment, simply because they have the diagnosis of Down syndrome. Well, let me play devil's advocate. Sure. That's what I do. If I'm an employer, I am not going to employ somebody who does not do the job well. And I'm, I'm not going to hire someone with Down syndrome if it is something that takes a lot of cognitive abilities or physical abilities to do the job. And so can we come in with the ADA and say, no, you've, you've got to hire, hire this, this person anyway? No, I think you hire people on the merits of, of their abilities. Um, wouldn't you love to have a workforce that you've got people under your supervision that have not missed a day of work in 17 years? There's a young man that works at a King Supers here in town. He's worked there for 17 years. The only days he's missed is when he's been sent home from a business because he's been sick. Um, he's shown up to work sick and they sent him home. From a business perspective, and I employ people myself as the executive director, I hire and fire. Um, I would love to have a, um, a a staff, a workforce that that are committed, and then I don't have to spend the time, the money, and the energy on retraining. Let me give you a worry of mine, and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm being very heartfelt. I'm not worried about Down's kids. This, these kids are loved, and they're taken care of, and they're smothered with affection because they give so much affection. And I'm, I'm not worried about my son as a young boy because he's. 
he's just too damn adorable that I don't need to worry about it. If he goes into the street, somebody's going to find him and, and adopt him. I mean, he's just that great. I worry about him as a man. I worry about how society is going to treat someone who looks very different, who obviously looks mentally disturbed or deranged, who might not speak as well or might not speak at all. Uh, he's only now starting to put out a few words. And I worry about how society is going to treat him then. Right now, society treats him well. Everyone loves my son. But when my son is 25, will it still be the same? That's why this is so important. It's, um, it's not just up to me and you as parents. Um, it's up to the people behind the cameras, the people up in the booth doing all they're doing, uh, the people that I'm going to pass on the street. They have to understand, once again, that these are people first. People with Down syndrome learn just like you and I do. Um, they just learn differently. I used to be a teacher, and if I had 30 students in my classroom, I had 30 different learning styles. If you would have taken my son or your son and placed him into my classroom, I would have then had 31 learning styles. There's no difference. People with Down syndrome are going to college. They're uh, getting their degrees from college. They're living independently. They're getting married. They're getting divorced at the same rate that you know the typical uh, population is at about 50 percent. Um, it's no different. It's once again very, very similar to everyone else. And going back to what you said earlier, it's the dreams and aspirations. As long as the same resources uh, and opportunities are afforded to our children, they should be fine at 25. It's when we start taking those resources and opportunities off the table due to a label that, yeah, I would be very, very worried as well. I don't want to run out of time before sure. we get to Mile High Down Syndrome Association, what, what you guys do here. You're, you're um, oh, how to put it, you're a go-to group. Mm -hmm. So when parents like me go, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> that you, you're, you can pick up the phone and talk to somebody at, at your organization, and I am floored absolutely floored to understand how tiny your organization is. It's only about $400,000 a year. Um, we need to change that. Um, tell me what you got going on on September, September 5th, uh, 25th. It is our largest fundraising event. It, this will be the 15th year we've hosted a benefit walk. It's the Step Up for Down Syndrome Walk. It'll be at City Park. Uh, registration starts at noon. It goes, I mean, at 7 a.m. it goes until noon. Everybody's invited. Once again, it's that awareness component. We, we have more people in the park that, without Down Syndrome than we do with, but that's the beauty of it. It's a chance for people to come out and learn, kind of get out of your comfort zone. You know, it's not every day that you're in a park filled with, you know, a couple of thousand people with Down Syndrome, but now's your chance to do it. Come out and learn. You'd be surprised. And how does it raise money for you? Uh, people register. So they can go to stepupdenver.org to register. Um, with that, you get a T-shirt, free pancake breakfast, live entertainment. Um, and it's just people raising you funds. You understand, I'm, I'm a Republican. I, I don't want to do exercise even for myself. Why would I do it for you? So how, can, can I drive the course or take a Segway or smoke a cigar along route just to, just to hack off people? Is that you, okay? You can smoke a cigar. I'm going to ask that you not drive or use the Segway. Um, I saw your segment with the uh, the police of chief, chiefs of police, so it's probably best that you don't drive. But right. um, yes, you can walk. You can sit. Where in your do people town. go? City uh, Park. Uh, give me your web address. www.stepupdenver.org or mhdsa.org. Thank you so much. Thank you. Tell a friend, and we'll see you next week.